Microsoft's Entity Framework provides a great way to get data into and out of our ASP.NET Web Forms applications. So in this section, we're going to talk about what is Entity Framework and what are the different options that are available to me and you as a developer. So let's first start off by answering the question, what is Entity Framework? Well, you've already seen it a little bit up to this point. We've used the Entity Data Source and we've even created a simple Entity Model to query a database without writing much code. Well, we'll get into a little more details in this section. So let's first off talk about what is Entity Framework. Well, it's an Object Relational Mapping Framework, or you'll often just hear people say it's an ORM. Now, there's a lot of different ORMs out there that are popular, but Entity Framework is available in the .NET Framework, and Microsoft has shipped, at the time this video was made, a new release, which is Entity Framework 4.1. And we'll be talking about some new functionality available with this release. What an ORM does is it allows us to take objects and persist them back to the database and that's great when you're doing inserts, updates, deletes, but it also provides a really easy way to select data from the database. So oftentimes the standard workflow if you use traditional ADO.NET code, which is also an option that you can choose, is we'll write a query and we'll do that with a SQL command as an example we'll create a connection to the database, we'll get back the results, and then we'll iterate through the results set and fill custom objects and fill the appropriate properties. And that takes quite a bit of code to do that, and it's not exactly the most fun code to write. Well, with Entity Framework, I can have it generate the SQL for me, query the database, and then also have it map the result sets back to my strongly typed objects. So if I had a customer table in the database, we can query it, get back that data, and fill, have it fill customer objects. And as I mentioned, we can also persist changes to the customer object or objects back to the database. So it'll also generate insert, update, and delete statements. Along the way, if we're performing different actions, such as maybe we're batching together inserts and updates, it'll also do transactions. So it has implicit support, built-in support for transactions to roll back any issues that might occur. So it's a great way to go, and it's a very, very productive way to go if you need to get data into and out of your apps, and let's face it, that's typically what we do. So let's take a quick look at the different options available to us as developers in the Entity Framework. Now when you use Entity Framework, there's three options you can choose. The first is Schema First, where you have an existing database, and you want to take those tables and then create classes from those tables, and that's Schema First. The database schema already exists. We also have model first. This is where you'd create an Entity Framework Designer uh, diagram. And this is something you do right in Visual Studio using the wizard. And then you'll add the entities that will ultimately become the tables in your database. So you'll right click on the designer, you'll add in your entities, and then you'll create your database once you're done. So a little bit backwards approach than the schema first, uh, where the database already exists. Now the one that's new in Entity Framework 4.1 is Code First. Now this is actually my preference uh, nowadays because this is a very code-centric approach. It allows us to write classes like we normally would do with simple properties in them, POCO classes, plain old CLR objects, that we can then persist to a database using something called a DB context. Now with this model, it's much like Model First, except we'll actually write custom C Sharp or VB classes and then we'll use those classes to actually automatically generate the database and those tables we created for us. So we'll be talking about that throughout this module. Now schema first and model first certainly warrant some attention though. It's, it's very possible you might be in a company where you have a DBA that creates the database and that's not something you do. Well with schema first we can go through and use a wizard to easily take what we have with our database and then reverse engineer that back into actual classes that map table to class and property to field. So the steps to do that are shown here. You'll add an ADO.NET entity data model into your project. You'll then go in and select the database as you see here. From there on the next screen you can uh, select your tables and you saw me do this again in an earlier module. And then you can write some link queries against those entities that get generated. Makes it very very easy to work with. Once you're done walking through that wizard, then you'll get a database diagram similar to this. So you'll see we have our entities, we have relationships, what we call navigation properties between the entities, and now we can query this 
using a link query or a, we can even use a lambda expression if we'd like. In the remainder of this module, I'll focus on the code first approach. And we're actually going to see how to write classes that can ultimately generate the tables that get created in our database. So let's jump into that and take a look.